Top of the morning to you ladies, I'm Dr. Jack Septicai, and welcome back to my ER. Are you all ready for a brand new surgery video? I sure am, but first, we gotta, we gotta sanitize, okay? We gotta get our hand sanitizer, and we gotta kill all that bacteria on there. Because a good doctor scrubs in before he scrubs off. Here we go, yes, oh, feeling good. Nurse! Is have my coffee ready! Five minutes, that's all it's gonna take me. Right, so, we are doing a retinal detachment surgery. I think that's what it is, yeah, detached retina surgery. Um, judging by the way I react to eyeball things, this is probably gonna be horrible, but you know what? A good doctor never shies away from a challenge, or never shies away from something that's gonna make him cringe into oblivion like his face sucked on 12 lemons. It's- it's loading. My surgery is loading. I'm waiting for the patient. Hope Dr. Susie's here. Hello, and oh, welcome fuck. to Surgery Squad's Retinal Detachment Surgery. Oh, it's I'm Dr. Dr. Jeff, Jeff, and I'll be guiding you through this procedure today. Where's Susie? The vitriol fluid, which is the gel in your eye, can contract, pulling the retina away from the eye. This contraction can cause a small tear in the retina, allowing the fluid to seep behind the retina, detaching it from the back of the eye. This can cause loss of vision. Ooh. A retinal detachment is a very serious ailment that must be dealt with as soon as possible oh, after discovery. I didn't know that. Okay. Symptoms that you may experience with a detached... Can you see this image? Can you see everything that's going on in this image? If you can't see the small bunny rabbit in the far right corner of this image, then you might have detached retinas. I'm sorry to say, if you can't see everything that's going on in this image, if you can't see the piece of cloud up in the top left corner of the shape like Mike Tyson, I don't know, you're probably gonna have to go see a doctor, okay? Luckily, I'm gonna teach you how to do this. or frequent flashes of light, shadows appearing in your peripheral or side vision. Wait, 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 what? <laughs> Seeing floaters is a sign of retinal detachment? I see those all the time. Like, all the time. I thought that that was just a common thing for the, like, the viscous fluid inside your eyes that made you see floaters all the time. If any of you out there don't know what floaters are, if you look at, like, a white image, a white bright image, and sometimes you see these, like, little, little squiggly things around, but when you try and look at them, they move slightly and they keep moving with you, those are eye floaters. Um, freaking flashes of light or shadows, okay, I don't have those. A gray curtain moving across your field of vision, or a sudden decrease in your vision. Again, if you experience any of these symptoms, contact your eye doctor immediately. Okay, these Today these these videos are gonna fucking make me a hypochondriac. That's what's gonna end up happening. Oh hey, you just look like you were in a bar fight as well, just like Karen was. Okay, we're going to perform a retinal reattachment called a pneumatic retinopesky. The sure. surgery takes about an hour and can be done on an outpatient basis. Okay. Our patient today is a 30-year-old man who recently noticed flashes in his vision. His ophthalmologist dilated the eye and detected a retinal tear and a detachment. Are you sure you just weren't watching, like, Netflix and you were seeing flashes, you know, going across? Because that can happen when you watch The Flash. <laughs> he recommended immediate surgery to limit additional loss of vision. Let's begin. Okay. No, no problem. First, we need to administer a relaxing sedative intravenously. Oh, not the IV drip again! This will make again. our patient drowsy, but not put him to sleep. Can you place the needle for me? Oh, I don't want to. Can I just hit him with a hammer and knock him out that way? <laughs> I, can, I can punch real good. <laughs> I don't want to have to put a fucking IV drip in. Well, at least it's not going into my hand. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We've seen a thousand of these already. Ow! Yeah, stick that worm in there. There we go. Just prior to surgery, additional drops of anesthetic are applied. Okay. Oh, we're putting anesthetic on your eyes. Okay. Are you- Sir? Are you okay? Blink twice if no! Okay, he's fine. There, just gonna put acid in your eyes. We'll use a device called a speculum to hold the eye open wide. We'll use a device called a lens to look at his face. During the procedure. Place the speculum for me, please. Oh, my eyes are already feeling weird. And now because of the eye floater thing and the, like, loss of vision, I'm super paranoid. I'm terrified about losing my vision. I, I very highly value my vision. And the fact that I've had to get glasses and my vision has had a huge drop in quality over the last, like, two years because I've been doing YouTube so much and I've been looking at computer screens and phones and everything so much. 
I don't know, I'm always worried about fucking up my eyes. I already fucked up my ear ears years ago by by playing drums all the time and not wearing ear protection for most of it. And just listening to stuff really, really loudly. And now I have tinnitus and I don't like it, so I'm trying to take care of myself. Oh Jesus, that's a big red eyeball. Now that the patient is anesthetized, we insert a syringe into the eye. An anesthetized. Okay, got it. Drag the syringe and click. Oh, are we sticking a syringe directly into your eyeball? <laughs> Don't. Da, da, no. Eyeballs are not supposed to have things poked in them. I can't even handle when somebody touches their eye. Oh, Jesus, take now the wheel. Now we eject an air bubble into the vitriol fluid. Why would you do this thing? As the bubble expands, it pushes the retina back against the wall of the eye. <laughs> Let that bubble go. With the retina back in place, we can now seal the tear using a freezing probe. The probe is touched to the outside of the eye where the tear is. This freezes the tear back in place. It may take several what? touches depending on the size of the tear. Mr. Freeze, get in here! We need we need you to put a thing on this! Oh, what the hell? The freezing probe! Is that really what doctors call it? Nurse, give me the anesthesia. Nurse, give me the, the septum. Nurse, give me the scalpel. Nurse! Give me the freezing rod! Fre freezing probe! Yeah, god, that's a fucking cool name. Okay. Everybody chill. This action is also done with a laser. The tear is now repaired. The needle insertion will heal quickly. Can you remove the speculum? Wait, that's it? What? That seems highly easy. Why did you say this takes an hour to do? Also, are we just gonna leave a bubble inside this man's eye? There you go. A special pair of post-op sunglasses also need to be worn oh, to protect his eye from sunlight yeah, and other bright light as his eye recovers. Because we need people to know that he went through a battle. A battle with his eyes. He has a scar now. And your sunglasses make you look cool. And now you have an excuse to wear them indoors. However, the biggest part of the recovery is head positioning. The bubble floats to the top of the eye. So the head must be positioned to keep the bubble against the detached portion of the eye. This means the patient must keep his head facing down, or the position indicated by his surgeon, for at least a week. What? You need to be like this? For about a week? That's, that's really hard! The only time my head's ever like this is if I'm on my phone or in the shower, getting the water on the back of my head. So you have to sleep? Like, it's, imagine I'm flat, and you're sleeping with like a pillow like this? What happens if you move around in your sleep? That fucking sucks, Dr. Jeff. You're not a real doctor, are you? You did a great job today, surgeon. Thanks! While you're here, try one of our other surgeries here at SurgerySquad.com. I didn't even do anything! Why are you recommended me births? Oh, God. Birthing surgeries? Oh, I didn't even know these were on there. Everything else is like silicone breast implants, teeth whitening, teeth removal. Oh, oh, mercy. I'm very curious right now. All right, we're all about to see the beauty of childbirth, okay? For any of you who are squeamish, or any of you who don't want to see this shit, click away now. Um, uh, because this, this is going to be, this is going to be full on, I imagine. We're going to see a child be birthed into the world. Wait, did I do one of these already? No, I don't think I've done a pregnancy surgery. I think I remember that. Or maybe I just blanked it from my memory. Welcome to Parent Point. I'm Dr. Rachel. Wait, wait, wait. Who the fuck is Dr. Rachel? Okay, I don't trust you, Dr. Rachel. Even if you are an obgyn, okay? I, I, I trust Dr. Susie. I don't really trust Dr. Jeff, but it's a name I know and it's a face I've seen before. Dr. Rachel, I haven't seen or heard about before. Very, very worried. As a doctor, the birth of a baby is the most remarkable thing that I get to experience. Excuse me, did you not just see me fix people's eyes a couple of minutes ago? I mean, childbirth is great and all, but have you heard about cataract explosions inside your eyes? Uh -huh. Did you know that more than two-thirds of all babies born in the United States are delivered vaginally? And average costs for a vaginal delivery without complications in the U.S. range from six to ten thousand dollars. Wow. I mean, the other third is that they're uh, delivered by cannon. 
that you just stick a cannon in there and go boom, and the baby flies out and then the doctor's just like, here you go. 100% <coughs> qualified real doctor here. A normal gestation period for a single birth is between 37 and 41 weeks. Wow. Nearly 80% of all newborns are delivered at full term. Damn, I came out after four weeks, is that weird? I, I was in there and it was just like, Oh, all right, fuck it, let's do this. And I was in there lifting weights, I was on a treadmill, I was going at it. After four weeks, fully developed, had a full head of hair, um, had a giant pair of testicles, and came out and said, Yeah, what up, let's fucking do this. Most women go into spontaneous labor, but about one in five women are induced. This it sounds like you made it, you made it sound like they just go into spontaneous labor. It's just like walking down the street, it's like, huh. Not even pregnant or anything, it's like, am I late for my- OH GOD, I'm, I'm in labor! <laughs> now that we've covered the basics, let's deliver a baby. Sure, I, I'm prepared! Our patient is in her late 20s. Karen! Okay, so stuff's about to get a little weird, okay, but this is natural childbirth. It's about to happen. If you're not ready for this, then it might not be a good idea to be here. I am ready for this because I am... The best doctor the world has ever seen, so I'm about to do this, okay? No problem! Two electrodes are placed on the mother's abdomen. Okay, I'm not ready, what? <laughs> Here you go. Take, take this weightlifting belt. A blood pressure cuff will be applied to check the mother's blood pressure throughout the procedure. This one I know how to do. Our there you go. Our patient and baby are doing fantastic. Let's feel the patient's stomach to check on the baby's position. Okay. Here you go. Great. I see a head! We can feel that the baby is positioned to come out head first. I have x-ray so vision! So do not have to worry about a breech birth. That is, where the baby is positioned feet first. Okay. Whoa! Our patient's water just broke. <laughs> Whoa! Our patient's head just turned! <laughs> we can see that her cervix is effaced and fully dilated at 10 centimeters. Wow! So we are transitioning into the second stage. Our patient is now having some painful- <laughs> Our patient is now incredibly uncomfortable. I am so sorry, Karen. This is what needs to happen. You're gonna have a beautiful bouncy baby after this, okay? Are you with me? Keep up that positive mental attitude. We can get through this. Contractions. So she is doing the breathing exercises she learned in her prenatal classes. Me too. Remember, since she has chosen to have a totally natural birth, we won't be administering any pain medication. You got this, okay, Karen. Now we want oh, to bear man. down and push. Okay. <laughs> okay. Forty minutes later. There it is. Oh! I can see the baby's head crown. Okay, you can't see this because this is this is not is suitable. To help ease the baby through the birth canal. Woo! But we are doing okay right now. We are, however, going to help our patient slightly using our hand. This will How? provide added space for the baby to come out. Oh, man! Okay, um... Okay, Robin, you're gonna have to censor this because... The demonetization people are up there going... Huh? Huh? So, okay, it's purely for educational purposes. Don't know why I'm here. Karen, that's a great face you got going on. Ugh. Is that allowed? Is that allowed? I don't know! At first I was just- I was saying that I was a good doctor, I was just pretending, man! I don't know what I'm doing with babies! I'm not an obguy. The baby's head rotates as it exits the mother's body. DEMON! Before we fully remove the baby from the birth canal, we need to make sure the umbilical cord isn't wrapped around the baby's neck. It's nice, good! Pull the baby from the birth canal! Cool! Oh, what the fuck? Just like that? The baby is born. Now, let's remove excess fluid from the baby's airways using the suction bulb. It's, it's hurting my ears! Demon baby! Okay, here you go. Oh, it's beautiful! Childbirth is it's beautiful! Ah, I thought of that going in my We're mouth. almost there. Clamp and cut the baby's umbilical cord in order to detach it from the placenta. Okay, this one I can do. This one, no problem. Nice, nice. Ooh, well that's spongy. It's a baby girl. Our team of nurses will wash off the baby, but we're not quite done yet. <laughs> we're not? The doctor, midwife, or nurse will assess the baby's breathing, heart rate, color, reflex response, and muscle tone, and assign a score ranging from zero to two. Our baby is swole. We're gonna test its muscle tone, and we're gonna be like, are we allowed to have this baby out in the streets? 
This baby could kill a person. Removing the placenta requires just a bit more pushing by our new mother. Okay, push, mama, push! Oh, God! If there are any tears to the cervix or vagina during birth, we would suture them. But in this case, our mother is fine. Oh, I highly doubt that. If we're sh that's just the way it is. 40 minutes of natural childbirth, the mother's fine, the baby's fine. This sounds like a fucking Disney movie. A healthy mother and baby oh. will sometimes be discharged from the hospital the day after giving birth. I suggest that new mothers have assistance with chores following childbirth and that- I suggest that new mothers hire a very sexy, muscular young man to clean their house. Amazing, isn't it? Oh! I when they get home, yep. our new parents will spend lots of time feeding their baby. And they'll change more diapers than ever imagined. <laughs> they'll also lose more than a little sleep as they adjust to the baby's schedule. <coughs> Thanks for stopping by Parent Point and helping bring a new life into the world. No, no problem. Why not check out the other exciting parenting information and procedures that we have to offer here on ParentPoint.com. And that took a lot out of me. Um, just like to say, uh, not a real doctor in regards to babies, so that was that was quite a lot. Um. Thank you for joining me, other doctor who's more qualified. I, I need to play one that's a lot more lighthearted than this one. Something that's not as extreme, because that was- Childbirth's beautiful! Sorry, mom! <laughs> Let's just go with some good old-fashioned teeth whitening. I mean, technically dentists are doctors as well. Me, a fully-fledged real doctor, doesn't see them that way. You're- you're more of a, uh, you're more of a teeth mechanic. Then you are a doctor. Okay, so don't get up in your high horse. I fix hearts and eyes. What do you do? Scrub people's teeth? Yeah, whatever, man. Fucking hate my brother. Um, okay, let's scrub in and scrub some teeth. I've always, I've always been fascinated to find out how teeth whitening is actually done. Because I've never gotten it done in, my, in real life myself. I hate my teeth. I hate getting anything done with my teeth. I have always wanted to try getting them whitened just to see what it was like. So now we can live vicariously through this game. Hello, and welcome to Surgery Squad's Susie! Virtual Teeth Whitening. I'm Dr. Susie, we and I'll be you. guiding you through this procedure today. Okay, thanks, Susie. You no longer have to be a supermodel or a movie star to have a dazzling white smile. Just about anyone nowadays can get one. He looks so happy to have these. I got my teeth whitened, and it changed my life. <laughs> Our teeth become stained from coffee, tea, and other dark-colored liquids. I drink and a lot of coffee. And smoking certainly adds to the discoloration. I don't do that one. A teeth whitening procedure can remove those stains caused by age and the things that we eat and drink. Also, Photoshop. There are a variety of ways to do it. A whitening toothpaste or rinse, over-the-counter okay. strips and gels, tray-based whiteners, or in-office whitening performed by a dentist. This is the one I want to know. While the most obvious benefit- Ancient Romans used urine and goat milk as a product to keep teeth whiter. Should, should, should we tell them? You do need to know that whitening is not permanent. And a whitening program, whether you do it yourself or have it done by a dentist, might not always lead to the results you want. Okay. If you have the <laughs> whitening performed by a dentist, your teeth need to be in pretty good condition. Your dentist will also want to fill any cavities or replace older fillings before the procedure. Yeah, that's the one I don't like. Getting fillings, I have like 20 million of them in my mouth. Don't like them! Don't want more of them! Get them? No! In addition, a dentist will not perform the procedure if you have gum disease or your teeth have worn enamel. If you already have crowns or other restorations, the whitening will be inconsistent between those teeth and the others. Okay. That makes sense. Our patient Karen! today is a 27-year-old woman who has okay. opted for an in-office- Is she a fucking time traveler or something? Between- Operation and medication and dentist appointments and everything. She just flip-flops in her age. She's just going around. She's like, hey, I'm Karen. I'm 27. I was like, sure you are. She's a tremendous admirer of coffee, but she wants to impress the folks <laughs> at her <t> Oh, <laughs> Oh, can I please use that one? I don't just love coffee. I don't love drinking coffee. I'm a tremendous admirer of coffee. Sometimes I just sit in my kitchen looking at the cupboards and being like, coffee. Just staring at the coffee from a distance, admiring it. Sometimes I write letters to my coffee to say how much I admire it. It's like, hmm, I love your deep inky blackness, the way you smell in the morning, just the way you make me feel. I just feel so much more energized around you. 
I want you in me. Your secret admirer. <laughs> in your class reunion with a bright white smile. So let's scrub up, glub up, and help her out. Scrub up, glub up. Our Shake hygienist shit has up. already cleaned her teeth to remove all of the plaque. So let's Good job. start by matching our patient's current tooth shade with one from our shade reference guide. Okay. Um this one, because this is the only one that's yellow and your teeth are yellow. Right? Okay, we've got our starting shade. Your teeth let's are see if A1. We can make them more like this. First, protect her lips and tongue by covering them with these rubber guards. <laughs> protect her lips and tongue by kissing her. <laughs> Okay. Oh, is this one of the smiley ones? <laughs> nice work. Uh, now we need to cover her gums and papilla, which are the tips of her gums between her teeth, with oh. a special coating to protect them from the risk of chemical burns when we use the bleaching agent. Excuse me, uh, chemical burns? Fake and drag to apply. Okay. Ugh, that didn't sound good. <laughs> Now, let's mix up our bleaching agent. We'll use carbamide peroxide, which is a powerful, reddish-looking substance. It turns into a stronger form of hydrogen peroxide in the mouth once we clean it off with water. Oh. That's when it takes off the stains. Don't drink it, though! The mixture is ready, so let's get it onto our teeth. Let's Cover get it on, Susie! Evenly. Okay, click and drag. Okay. Ah, oh, it's just like ketchup. <laughs> Have you been eating hot dogs, Karen? It looks like you got a lot of ketchup on your teeth. There, your teeth are perfectly white now. Most women out there putting on red lipstick, trying to get that deep, like scarlet color, trying to trying to dress to impress. You know what? You know what people are really into these days? Red teeth. That's what they really like. We keep this solution on her Beautiful. teeth for about a half an hour. Jesus. Oh, Let's come see on. what kind of beautiful smiles underneath all of this red stuff. <laughs> you just brush Take it off and her teeth go in. <laughs> wash away the carbamide peroxide. <laughs> her teeth just fall apart. Okay, what's going to happen? Wow. Wowie, wow, wow, wow. Look at that. Look at those pearly shiners. Amazo. I feel like an infomercial for teeth whitening. Like the people who, who show you like carpet cleaning and they're like, just in 30 minutes, look how much whiter this carpet has become. And with a simple splash of ketchup on her teeth, they have become whiteness. Wowie, wow, wow. Now with our dental pick, simply pop the protective coating from her gums. There, our dental pick. Jesus. Our, okay, do it. Wow. Oh, that came off real nice! She's really gonna knock him dead with that bright smile of hers at her class reunion. Very but good! For now, her teeth will probably be sensitive for a few days. Yeah, I've heard that. She should avoid extremely hot or cold beverages for the rest of the day. She should avoid extremely hot looking people because that could be very sensitive to your teeth. She should also avoid her coffee because even though she is an extreme admirer of it and use a toothpaste made for sensitive teeth for a couple of weeks Sensitive. she should also as much as possible avoid discoloring beverages like coffee colas or red wine for a few days can't do it if she smokes well now would be a perfect time to stop <laughs> well this bleaching she's will fucked. most likely last for two or three years so she'll want to make this an ongoing part of her overall dental care Whoa, last three she years? She should call her dentist if she feels a burning sensation in her gums or on her teeth that lasts for a couple of days. Ooh. Or if her teeth remain highly sensitive. You did a fantastic job today. While you're here, try your hand at one of our other surgeries available at SurgerySquad.com. Nah, I think I'm okay. This cataract eye surgery kind of fucked me up last time, so I think I'm good for now. I think, I think easing off on something as easy as teeth whitening and just seeing Magic happen. Let's forget about the other ones that were in this video because I'm just gonna blank them from my memory and move on with my life because I can't look at those again. <sighs> you know what? Surgery is fantastic. There's many ways to fix a body, to give life, to improve your cosmetics. There's a lot of different things out there that you can do. 
And this is a great resource for that. I'm learning so much. Now I'm terrified of going anywhere. Well, that does it for this surgery video. Thank you all for being here. We all learned a little something here today. Let me know if you want to see me do more surgeries. There are loads of them on this website. There's, I, I can see like 12 more of them already just here in front of me. So we have a lot of material. We have a lot more surgeries to do. We have a lot more learning to do. Who knows? We might be able to figure out how we can shove a balloon up inside our asses and float away in Narnia. That's a surgery. It's right there. Look. Whatever. Oh, don't look at it. But thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you liked it, punch the like button in the face like a boss. And I pay all right. Whoosh, whoosh. Thank you guys. And we'll see all you dudes. <laughs>